Hi friends, welcome back to my channel. Today I have a special project to share with you and this one was full of things that I didn't for the first time and gave me a new look about woodworking. Today I'll be building my dining table, but we also can call it the game board table. Before diving into the construction, let's talk about the material selection. Initially, I was planning on using hardwood maple for this table base. It's durable, beautiful, and perfect for furniture making. However, painting such a high quality, inexpensive wood didn't sit right with me. So I decided to use MDF for just one portion of the base, and then the rest of the base is going to be made of Douglas 4 for the supports, stretches, and then the benches that I'm also going to build. Choosing inexpensive materials doesn't mean sacrificing quality. It's about finding the right balance between aesthetic and practicality. I cut the MDF and I sandwiched three parts because I want it to be bulky. This sheet of MMDF, it's sitting in my shop for a few months now and I'm trying to use all my scrap of wood because I'm trying to clean my shop and this project definitely helped me with that. I built two bases just like this one and now I will cut the excess and make square with the truck saw. To avoid the table to be too boxy, I will add some curves in the edges of my base and then use the jigsaw to rough cut. I did the same thing with the benches behind the scenes. I clamped both bases together and I wanted to cut some dados to fit my top stretches. After figuring out the best way to do that, I opted to use my truck saw because I thought it was the most safe and faster way. Then I gave a lot of passes, very careful. Once the cut was done, I used my chisel to clean it up and then while it was still clamping together, I sent the curves to be exactly the same in both bases. Then I round over the edges and I added wood filler on the edges behind the scenes and set aside so I could focus on my stretches. I started milling all the Douglas floor. I first run through my jointer to get one face and one side square. Once it was good to me, I run through my planner to square the other face. Then it was time to square up the other side and I use my table saw for that. Here I'm cutting the stretch to fit in the dado that I made on MDF. For some reason, my video that I made this part was deleted from my phone, but I connected the stretch the same way I made the dados on the stretches to connect the parallel boards, and then I added 45 degrees red oak to give you more support, and that was very helpful. So this was a lot of measuring and making sure the height was good. In the end, I ended up building my base in a very good height. I'm going to leave the measurements of the table in the description below if you're interested in building something like that. And it turned out to be a great height overall for the entire table. Now I'm cleaning up what is going to be the bottom stretcher. This was a last minute idea to add more strain to the base. I was working on the things behind the scenes because I had a gaming night coming and I promised my husband I would finish before that. So I'm jumping a few process that I already cover in previous video, like this tabletop. But if you have any questions, leave it in the comment and I will be happy to answer them. I decided to add a support under the top that would help with the strength since it was a thin top and hopefully would also help avoid bow or cope. Back to the base before I paint. 
I made three holes to accommodate some dowels that will be coming out a little bit. This dowel will hold these screws. Yes, I could find another way, but at this point, I only had two days left before the gaming night, and I'm fine with my decision. To install the base was super, super easy, but I needed help because it was pretty heavy. And it's snowing again outside. And I'm grateful to have a warm home that I can stay in and be able to work from my garage doing what I love. But I'm looking forward to warmer weather. For the gaming board portion, and I want to keep the height of my table the way I want it, so I opted to a half inch plywood for the gaming box. This is why I built the support of the table the way I did. I wanted to have enough support under the entire box to keep the top sturdy. The top was pretty simple to build. I built this top focusing on the size of the gaming board mat that my husband will place inside. I will leave in the link for this mat if you want to check it out. It's pretty big. Also, let you know that in real life, I started building this table from this section. I just added differently because it made more sense to explain. For the walls, I only used the glue and a nailer. I was planning on adding screws, but after leaving to dry overnight, I thought the glue was enough. Also, because it was a half inch, I didn't want to split the plywood. I could build it in a different way. I probably should have for first had the, the walls on the outside and then after that I should put the walls the inside. But I didn't plan very much for this part, so that's what you have when you don't plan well. The copy holder is in the wrong place, but that's the idea. I painted the middle section black because even though I will have a black mat seating, the mat will have a half inch clearance around, and also I just thought that it looks more professional. At this point, I only gave one coat because black can get very dusty, so I thought that later on I would add the paint later. For the fun part. I knew that I want to add some cool bevel on the edges of to make it cool. So I set my blade to 30 inches degree and I cut one edge of the walnut. Then after that, I cut the edges into the right size of 45 degrees angle. And I used the clamps to make sure everything was lined up perfectly. I did it cut in once, one, just one cut. I actually cut slightly bigger and then I kept taking a little bit here and here just so it fits perfectly. I honestly think that cutting angles on the miter saw won't give you the perfect cut, but my blade tape, my table saw was not set up to use my crosscut sled and I didn't want to waste my time. But if you're going to do this, I would recommend take the time to set up your crosscut sled because the angle will be much better. Put inside, take my measurements, cut in my 45, put it back and I dry fit 100 times. So I worked with this part for about three days and I always left in clamps like this overnight to avoid any bowl or coping because at night my shop was too cold and then throughout the day was warm because the heaters. So to make the cup holder holes, I could just use a hole saw, but the weather was crazy outside this week and I didn't have a hole saw big enough to use, so I used my router to make this. For the game slots, this is how I'm calling it. I use the same router jig. I don't like to use complicated ways to do my projects and this router jig was a champion.
sending this was not easy. Every day my husband came home from work with something new that he wanted me to add. So first was this walnut wall. I agreed that all his additions made this table much better every time, but sometimes it's not easy to make additions. I'm glad I was taking slow before my next move. So he wanted me to add some walls on the inside of the table and was really nice. I think that definitely gave a different look in the table, so I'm glad I did. I'm also only using glue to attach this, nothing else. Cleaning the inside was time to glue the walnut top. But before that, my husband asked me for the second request. He wants a card slot, which makes sense on a game board table. But this time, I tried on a scrap piece before because I didn't have much room to make the groove. I bought the tiniest router bit that I could find. Then I did the right piece. I didn't share much of me sanding here, but I have to say that sanding those little corners of the the slots and the card slot and the groove was like the hardest things in the entire project. The third and last request was two bow ties in each corners. This was my first time doing bow ties and I was scared because if I made one mistake in this process, I would have to build the entire tabletop again. So I took it super slow, I purchased a bow tie kit, he chose the wood that he wanted and for my surprise was purple heart. The only color in a rainbow that I say that I hate, but like he say is his dream table. So I can leave with that. Also, I was so excited about how the bow tie came out that I didn't care at all. If you want me to go deeper into templates, inlays, and router accessories, let me know and I can make a separate video covering just templates. Now is a good time to tell you that I'm trying to reach my first 1000 subscribers on this channel and I want to ask you if you are not subscribed yet to subscribe to this channel and help my business grow. If you're already a subscriber, with all my heart, I say thank you so much for being here. For the finish, I added three coats of polyurethane on the white portion of the table and for the walnut, I used a general finish in satin. I added three coats as well. I always use polyurethane when I have a white or light wood because that white creamy finish will help the wood from getting pink or yellow. But for my dark wood like walnut, I like to use oils and finish like this one. I also light sanded between coats with 320 and I gave a polish in the end with the wax. I always finish with wax, always, never skip this part. What I like about this table is, from out the outside, it's just a normal and simple white dining table with a fun walnut detail. And then when you remove the top, you have this amazing game board table. If you love this project, let me know giving this video a like and don't forget to subscribe to this channel. See you in the next one.